The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Okay, it looks like we're in business. Okay. I want to point out, are there any structural engineers in the audience? I think we have a stability problem up here. <laughs> so had I known that, I wouldn't have gotten up here so fast. And if I move too much to the left and the right and it goes the other way, pick me off the floor, will you? <laughs> okay, so we're, we talked earlier this morning, uh, Jane, talk, Jane Sperry talked about uh, the, our research at KU on uh, hook bars. I talked about headed bars. And now we want to talk about the proposed code provisions. And I want to, want to say that this is a moving object. If you ever work with ASAC Committee 318, you shove in one thing and something else pops out the other side. So this is, this is what it looks like today. It may look like this, may not look like this tomorrow. Okay, so I want to talk about the ACI provisions and as they exist to just to give something to hang your hats on. Then we'll talk about what we learned, just to, a, a, sort of the summaries of what, what we had early this morning. Comparison, very brief comparison with ACI test data, talk about the descriptive equations, and then the pr proposed provisions. Okay, so these are, these are the ACI equations for hooked and headed bars. These are development length equations. If you do the math, you'll see that if you make all the psi factors equal to one, that's the modification factors, then the basic development length of a hook bar is 80% of that of a headed bar. In both cases, they're linearly proportional, the development length is linear proportional to the, bar, the bar diameter and inversely proportional to the square root of F prime C. And everybody has this great emotional connection to F prime C. It's going to be interesting to see if we can do what we want to do on this and actually get it in the code. There are some other modification factors. The epoxy coating factor applies to both head and hooked bar, hook bars. All the rest that you see up here apply to uh, standard hooks. So we have a, if you have adequate cover, you can apply 0.7 factor. If you have confinement up to a, a minimum level, you can apply an 8 factor that you can have, multiply the two together and point, get 0.56. Lightweight concrete shows up in the denominator. You have a 0.75, so that would increase your development length. And you have a factor for excess reinforcement for hooks. So if you have, uh, if you have greater steel provided than you need, uh, then the, the ratio is less than one, and you can reduce your development length according to that. Turns out that's not a good idea, as we'll see. There are also limitations. A limitation, a usable strength in the equation for hooks is uh, 10,000 PSI, and you can go to 80,000 PSI for the, for the steel yield strength. Uh, heads, because of the limited data, 6,000 PSI is the maximum you can use in the equation, and maximum of grade 60 steel. And the area of the headed bar, if you have heads, limited to four times, has to be at least four times the area of the bar. Uh, limitations on bar spacing for headed bars, the regular cover requirements apply. In addition, you must have at least two bar diameters uh, on the outside uh, as, your, as, as part of your cover. And in the horizontal and vertical direction, you have to have clear spacing of at least four bar diameters. And the limit, you're limited for, for headed bars to number 11, just because there is no, no data out there. And certainly there wasn't data when we developed the, the design procedures. These are the proposed design equations. And if you do the, notice here, they look very much alike. The one difference is there's a lambda factor on hooks for lightweight concrete. We don't have any headed bar testing in lightweight concrete, so it's not permitted. But if you also take a look, you see the basic development length for heads is 80% of that, that of hooks, and that's real. I mean, that, that extra capacity is real. But also notice that now the development length is proportional to the bar diameter to the 1.5 power and inversely proportional to the compressive strength to the 0.25 power. And there's some reasons for that, and we'll see that. Okay, now what were the parameters? So I've kind of blended the parameters together for heads and hooks, but they're very similar. So bar size, 5 to 11, uh, we, for, for hooks, we did, looked at both 90 and 180 degree hooks. Uh, head size, 3.8 AB, just below the allowable in ACI. 
uh, and ASTM, up to 14.9 times AB, AB being in the area of the bar. Concrete compressive strength from 4,000 to 16,000 PSI. Center to center spacing from two bar diameters up to over 11 bar diameters. And one thing that we worth noting, there is no limitation on bar spacing in the code for heads, or hook, well, for, for hook bars and we are restricted for headed bars. Maybe we can change both of those, but you'll see that has an impact. We actually have for our splice tests, we went as low as 1.3 bar diameter, so just a little bit of space between the bars. Uh, stress at failure, uh, 23 to 153 KSI. Why is that important? That means this, the results are useful for the full range of steel that we have today and the steel that we may have tomorrow. If we get up to grade 120 steel, this is good for grade 120 steel because the tests include grade 120 steel. Okay, for the headed bars, just just a snapshot of the different the different types of headed bars. The ones on the right, they, they meet the ACI and ASTM requirements. The one on the left do not because they have, they have these large obstructions. But what we found is that the bearing, if you have the bearing area outside the obstruction, at least four times the area of the bar, it works well. So. We all the, all these work well, and we're working on ASTM uh, right now on A9970 uh, to make these legal. Okay, so what have we learned? Well, hooked and headed bars beha behave a lot alike. Uh, for the same embedment length, headed bars provide a higher anchor strength than hook bars. Closely spaced hooked and headed bars are weaker individually than widely spaced head hooked and headed bars. Uh, hook bars with 90 and 180 degree Bends have similar anchorage strengths, and that's actually old news. We've known that for many years. Confining reinforcement parallel to the bar increases the anchorage strength of hooked and headed bars. Confining reinforcement perpendicular to the bar increases the anchorage strength of hook bars, but not headed bars except in very special cases. So we have cases for headed bars where we have uh, reinforcement, confining reinforcement perpendicular, it makes no difference, and other cases where it does. So rather than go down in a ditch and say it's okay everywhere, we're saying it's okay nowhere right now as far as perpendicular confining reinforcement. ACI code does not accurately represent the anchorage capacity of hooked or headed bars in terms of the effect of bar size or the contribution of concrete compressive strength, and there's more. So let's take a look here. Uh, this is a comparison of the crack patterns. As similar size specimens in our lab, and you can see uh, they look a lot alike, but there is a, a kind of a key difference. If you take a look here, notice that you see the hook engages concrete down, down around the bend, whereas headed bar does not. So notice the cracks tend to be a little more linear than what we have on hook bars. That's kind of the, one of the main, the main differences, and again, head does a better job grabbing hold of the concrete. Okay, so let's take a quick look. This is a, a comparison with the ACI, what we, you would get in an ACI prediction. They predict for compressive, uh, for, for uh, bond stress. So this is a ratio of the test, the stress in the bar and test, to that predicted by the ACI versus concrete compressive strength. And so these are for specimens with just hook, two hook bars. We had two, three, four, and six hook bars in our specimens. And what we see for the two hook bars, and, and why would you do this? Why would I compare this? This is the basis for the current ACI code. They were all based, all the original tests in the 1970s, the, the small number, were based on two hook bars. So you see, first, the, the, up here at the top, this is the number five bar. And then we go six and seven and eight and, and nine and 11 in that order. So that tells us that we probably have, we're using longer development lengths, at least for low, low, low strength concrete. This is, then we, we need to for small bars and not enough for the larger bars. These are number 11 bars and notice that they're below 1.0. The average is below 1.0. And this is supposed, this is a design equation. It should be averaging at least you know 1.25 or higher. And it's down here at one at about six KSI. Also notice that these, these lines uh, slope all from uh, down from the left to the right. What does that tell us? That's the best, these are the best fit lines. It means that the square, the, the square root of F prime C is too high a power, all right? So we do two, two, two things. This tells us that when we calculate development length, D to the, D to the 1.0 power is not big enough, it needs a bigger power, and F prime C needs a smaller power when we, when we do our design. Same similar, same uh, results for hook bars, I mean head bars, they spread out, these again, these are two headed bar specimens, no confining reinforcement, number fives, eights, and elevens. We have some different high size heads here, makes the difference, the dash lines. But you can see here, we got a couple, uh, under 10,000 PSI, the average is below one. But the trend, the effect on, of compressive strength, 
drops down. And Werner, this is not all the tests. These are just the two-headed bar tests. We have a lot more, and they're out there, okay? okay. He was asking me earlier. Okay, okay, now how about, how about if we get them close, space closer? So now we have, we have, we have an, an nifty equations for both hooks and heads, and I'll show you those that, that match the data very well. Uh, this is test over calculated, uh, test and test versus using our, our, our best, our descriptive equation. This is uh, the cloud of the data out here for the widely spaced bars. Look what happens when we get closely spaced hook bars. It, the, the strength drops. We only have so much concrete, only so much we can pull out in a chunk. And so as we get them, uh, as, as the spacing drops, the, the strength decreases. So we'd like to include that in our design. Okay, so this is the descriptive equation for hook bars. It's kind of, you know, this is a, an academic equation, uh, but it's, it's helpful because we can compare versus the test that it gives us sort of the middle results. So the te this, this is the force in the bar equals the area times the stress in the bar. And it's, in this for hooks, it's, it's F prime, it's, this is the measured compressive strength, FCM, to the, to, I love this, this is 0.295 power, you got that, actually it was 0.294 or something, something, but anyway, we got 295, and notice it's slightly nonlinear in the actual embedment length that we have, and then, but notice that the bar diameter shows up here on the right side too. That, what that, what that comes from, what we see is that if you have bars of different size, with the exact same embedment length, the bigger bar grabs a hold of the concrete better than the little bar, gives you a bigger force. We saw that in the results. This term represents the con contribution of confining reinforcement. Our confining reinforcement can be parallel or perpendicular. ATH is the total area of the legs of the confining reinforcement in 16 bar diameters from the center line going down if they're parallel to the, the, the development length or in region perpendicular along the, the development length. And notice here with this region that it operates, even though these bars up here yield, these don't yield, these do yield up at the top, they, they operate on average about 28 KSI. So they're, they're even, even though they're yielding, they don't give us the full transfer. ATH, again, is the total area of bar and is the number of hook, to, total area of confining reinforcement and the, is the number of hook bars. So this is the area of confining reinforcement per hook bar to the one point, it's, a, it's the one power. And notice the bar diameter shows up over here too. That means bigger bars do a better job of grabbing a hold of confining reinforcement than smaller bars. All right, this is the des descriptive equation for headed bars. Uh, this, this, this is, and by the way, th these are for the two widely spaced headed bars. That's what we, we do, two widely spaced headed bars. Again, this is, uh, now, now it's the .24 power for headed bars. I pointed out this morning, 0.24 power, that's exactly what we got when we did our analysis of the ACI 408 database for straight bars in development splices. Uh, so 0.24, notice bar diameter shows up here. Now we're, we're defining the confining reinforcement just eight bar diameters from the center line of the head parallel to the headed bar. They're operating closer to 50 KSI even though they're yielding. And this is all the, the, the bars we had, the yield strength of 67 to uh, 72 KSI. Again, area confining steel, bar diameter shows up there too. So our design approach is to convert the descriptive equation from one in terms of, uh, in terms of from force to development length, and then to modify it from the widely spaced bars to one with a two bar diameter center to center spacing, and account for, and then it turn around and count for the wider spacing, count for the, co the confining reinforcement, and the bar location within the member, and then we incorporate reliability based fee factor. So this is the equation I showed you earlier. This is for hook bars, and so we have bar diameter to the 1.5 power, if we didn't get any extra grabbing capability from the big bars, it would be, de it would be bar diameter squared. It's, it should be re relative to the area. But a 1.5 works well. Uh, F prime C the 0.25 is workable for, for design. We keep the lightweight concrete factor. And now we have, and we keep the epoxy coating factor, no change. But we have two other factors we replace the others with. is a combined confinement and spacing factor and a location factor. So for the confined, the combined confining and confinement and spacing factor, what it is, is if the area, now we switch over, if the area, ATH, 
of the confining steel, the ratio of that to the total area of hook bars exceeds 0.4. We use the values on this line. If, there, if there's no confining reinforcement, then we use the values on this line. And if it's other, that, that means big bars, 14 and 18, uh, we would use this line, which is the same as what we have here. So we can notice uh, that confining reinforcement certainly softens the effect of closed spacing. Uh, but once we get out to wide spacing, we can use a 0.5. And if it's no confining reinforcement, it's 0.6. How about bar location factor? We observed in our hook bar test that placing bars on the outside of the, of the beam column, of the core, column core, made them weaker than on the inside of the column core. Now you might ask, why in the world would you put bars on the outside of a column core? Well, this is our stand-in for a cantilever beam where you don't have a column core. So that's what this is. The ratio is about 0.8, so we switch that around. And so we have some rules here. If the hooks are within a column core, we, we say it's a point we, and with at least 2.25 cover, which is sort of the minimum you would have with confining steel and longitudinal reinforcement. Or if it's another member with at least six bar diameters, we use a factor 1.0. We don't change anything. But if you other, in any other, any other cases where it's not confined in a core uh, or it doesn't have a lot of side spacing, side cover, it, you have to increase it by the inverse of 0.8 or 1.25. We say we're recommending getting rid of the excess reinforcement factor because notice that the, the tensile force is, is, is slightly nonlinear with development length. And so if we cut our development length in half, I more than cut the force in half. All right, so how do we do? This is measured force versus the calculated load for hook bars without confining reinforcement. Uh, they did quite well. I mean, it should be above one, and they average about 1.25 above. Here's hook bars with confining reinforcement. This is our expression for headed bars that you see here. It's 0.24, otherwise the terms are similar, and we have similar confinement spacing factor, except in this case we, we let the spacing get out as far as eight bar diameters, center to center, and we can drop it down to 0.4 instead of 0.5, and we can drop it to 0.5 instead of 0.6 for the wide spacing. And this is, we're above, this is the, e the value re representing equality, and this is the best fit line, and so this is without confining reinforcement, with confining reinforcement, and the proposed design expressions uh, or provisions cover compressive strengths up to 16 KSI and yield strengths to 120. And I want to thank our sponsors. Okay, do we have any questions to Dr. Darwin? So um, the proposed changes that, that you're uh, suggesting, is that going to make it into a code cycle soon, you know? And then secondly, I mean, besides the, uh, the hook bars, Stud bars. Are there, are there plans to introduce it for just straight bars as well, similar to your? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> when? Okay. Well, the the the, the straight bars with the quarter power. I can't complain. I can't say it's going to get through, but it's been through uh, 318 one, 318 uh, ballot now, and we're talking about it. And 318 sub B, the heads and hooks have just finished that ballot, and we're talking about that. Don't move. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Darwin.